In this video, I'll try to talk about some more functions and mainly if function. There was a function called sum if. We'll look at count function, count if, average if, and there is another variations of sum if s, and most probably the v lookup function. So let's start with the if function. Now the if function is a logical function. So under formulas within the logical category, you see the if function and you'll find there are lots of other functions like date and time and lookup so you can always click on any of them and then point to the function and it will tell you what it will do so that's a really good way to learn about functions and have a certain understanding about it like you see there is a function called dollar which is converts a number to text using currency format so all of these things can help in getting better understanding of different functions. So here I want to do a if function. If function is a logical function and the best way to understand it is like you know you talk to a child and you say if you will do this you will get something otherwise you'll get something else. So there are three parts to the if function and what I want to do in this example is I want to figure out which employee will get a bonus and who will not get the bonus. So I want to say that if they sell more than 5,000, give them a bonus, maybe 10% bonus. Otherwise, they will get only 1% bonus. So I'll start the logical if. I'm just going to move this guy a little down. Now I'm going to click on sales. And I'm going to put the greater than symbol. So you can use like greater than, less than, equal to if you needed it. And I'll put 5,000. And then I'll go to the next line and I'll put sales multiply by 10% because in this line I need to tell Excel the value if true. That is, what should happen if the test is true? That this person sells more than 5,000, what should they get? So I'm saying give them 10% of the sales. I'll click in value if false. Click on the cell for the sales. We always do calculation with cell reference, not the actual number. Multiply by 1% and I click OK. Now if I use the fill handle, you'll see that more than, less than 5,000 they get 1% bonus and more than 5,000 get 10% bonus. So there's 10%. Now anytime you change any of your criteria, you'll have to click on C2 start the fx because in that cell you have the if function so it will open that or you make the changes in the formula bar either way I prefer to score here and say if I change the value to say 7000 I have to click OK and now I have to use the fill handle again so I apply the formula down so now only one person gets 10 percent bonus now, if you wanted to do it a little differently, which might be a much appropriate way, would be that I'll click here and I can put the values here. So, say I can put 5,000 here, which will be the value to compare the sales to. And then if I want, I can say, you know what, let's put the 10 percentage sign here. So, that will be the percentage they will get. And then this up below that, I'll put 1%. So, that's the thing they will get if they don't sell more than 5,000. Now I'll go to C2 and I'll start the FX. Now instead of typing 7,000, I'll click on the cell that has the number. So B2 greater than whatever is in E2 and I'm going to make it absolute by pressing the F4 key on the keyboard which makes it absolute by putting the dollar sign because I want everybody's sales to look at the value that's in the cell because when I use the fill handle if I don't make it absolute E2 will become E3 so if you remember in the previous video I talked about absolute reference now I'll remove the 10% and I'll multiply that by whatever is in this cell I'll remove the 1% and I'll click in the cell which has the 1% and again I'll have to make the E3 appear absolute by pressing F4 and also the E4 should be absolute because all of these sales will be using these in the calculation so I'm gonna click OK and I'm gonna use the fill handle now when you change your mind I just come here to 5000 type 8000 and I hit enter 
Now nobody has 10% bonus. If I click the 8,000 and then I change it to 2,000, enter. Now if everybody has 10% bonus. Now if I want, I can change that 10% to 5%. Now everybody has 5% bonus. Okay. I'll do another variation of this in this example here below. So in this case, what I want to figure out is that um, if the stock goes, the current stock goes below a certain value of the optimal stock. So say 30% of the optimal stock or 50% of the optimal stock, which will be 500, I want to have a warning here, like say order or something like that. So to do this, I'll have to go to formulas, logical if, and I'll, my logical test is if current stock is less than, so I'll use the less than, the optimal stock multiplied by 50%. So that optimal stock can keep on changing, so that's fine. Now, what to do if that happens? So, in the next cell, I'll say if the current stock is less than 500, then put a sign order. Otherwise, OK. So, I'll click OK. Now, you see this is 100 current stock, which is less than 500. So, it should put their order. I can use the fill handle and I can pull it down. Now, up here, I'll also introduce the notion of conditional formatting, which I talk about because that will be useful here. So you can either highlight the cells or click on the top to highlight the whole column. And I go to Home, Conditional Formatting, Highlight Cell Rules, Equal to, and I'll say if it is equal to Order, then I want to make it red in color. And I'll click OK. So you see, every time it says order. I'll be visually able to see what needs to be ordered. Now if this 500 changes to 400, I hit enter, it should turn to order. And if this 100 changes to 600, I'm back to OK. So this is the way if function works. Now we all know how to use sum function, which is I just click here and I can click equal, sum, start the bracket, and I can highlight the range and I can close the bracket. So this is what's called the sum function. Now there is another function which is called sum if. So we're going to explain to you how that works. So I'm just going to click here and we're going to go to formulas. So in the formula, I'm going to go to math, and I'm going to look for sum if. So in the alphabetical order, there is the sum if. When you point to it, it says, as the cell specified by a given condition or criteria. Now, if you didn't know where it was, you could start the fx, and then type sum if, and then hit go. and it will find it for you. Now, for some reason, my computer is acting a little weird, but even if you just type the word sum, it will show you all the formulas which start with the word sum. So I'll click OK, and it opens this window. Now, the good thing is never need to memorize, because when you click in this boxes here, they'll tell you what you need to put in there. So here it's saying range is the range of the cells you want evaluated. So what I want to do is I want to do a summation, but I only want to do a summation of some employees. So say if I click on A, so it will mean the whole column, or I can highlight it like this, which means just those cells. So it's up to you. I'll just click on that whole column by clicking on A. Now the criteria. Now what's the criteria? My criteria is that I'm looking for a summation of Peter. So that's my criteria. And what is my sum range? My sum range is whatever numbers are in B. Or you can highlight some cells. And I'll click OK. So you see it's put 4500, which is Peter 4500. Now say if I change Mary to Peter and I hit Enter, now the total changes here because it does the addition of all of that. So this is called sum if. Now to talk about the sum if s, I'll just come to this database and subtotal sheet. And in this, I've got some country of UK and USA and some salespeople who've been selling some 
orders amount. So say I wanted to do multiple criteria so of summations rather than just one criteria. So I'll just show you an example of how this will work. So say if I go back to math trigonometry under the formulas and I'm looking for sum if s which is this one and all it is doing is just doing the same thing as sum if but with more than one criteria range. So I start it. Now in this I need to put the sum range. So which range do you want to add up? So I want the addition in the order so I click that so that it will look in here to match the criteria. Now I go to the next line. The criteria range 1. So I can say the first criteria range is column A and my criteria is say I can say USA. So that's the criteria. That's my first one. Now I go to the criteria range 2 and my criteria range 2 is B. And uh, my criteria is say criteria 2 I'll say let's put Peacock. So I think I spelled it right. Yeah. And I'll click OK. So now we see it goes around, finds the match of USA and Peacock, and it does the calculations of all those individual sales, and it adds it together. Now we'll look at the function count and count if. And now remember, whenever you had a question of any functions, just go to the help button here so that you can get more information. Just go to it, type the name of the function, so you'll get more help. So to do count, I go to more functions, statistical and I look for the count function. So there it is. And when you point to it, it tells you counts the number of cells in a range. So if I, that contain numbers. So if I click it, and um, if I just highlight a certain range, so say I just highlight these range. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I click OK, it should tell me that's 8 cells which contain information. So that's a count thing. Now like count, there is the count if under statistical. So looking for count if. And there are lots of other counts. You can look at it. So count if. What count if does is it looks in a range and then it counts how many times a certain criteria has been repeated. So say in the range column B. So I click on B. And I type a name. So let's see the one second one, Suyama, S-U-Y-A-M-A. -A. Now the spelling has to be correct. And I click OK. So now it counts and it tells me that 65 times that word has been used in that column. So this information goes down. So that's a lot of rows of information. So it's counting how many times that word has been used. Now, we'll, in the same way, we'll talk about average and average if. So under more functions, statistical, there is an option called average if. So that means I want to do an average of the order amount, but say of the person Suyama. So I can go to average if. Now, what is my range? So so you see, always try to look in the information here to, if you didn't know. Range is the range of the cells you want evaluated. So I click on A because that's the criteria that I'm looking for. And in the criteria, I'm going to type, say, for example, UK. And I'll click in average range. Now, what that's my actual cells that needs to be average. So wherever the amounts are, so I click on E and I click OK. So now this is the average of that person. Okay. Now I'll do the average if S. So I'll click into more functions, statistical average if S, which is the same. It's just that I want to use two different criteria from two different columns. I believe I tried to do it from the same column. It doesn't work. So I click on average if s. Now what is my average range, the actual cells that you want to average, which is e. What is my criteria range 1? So I'll say let's click on b and I'll do Suyama just for practice. Now what is my criteria range 2? So Suyama is in UK, but I'm just going to for practice, I'm going to click on a. And I'm going to put the criteria USA. So I'm trying to find the average of the salesperson Suyama 
but and their stat sales shouldn't be in USA should be not in UK but in USA so let's click OK and there is nothing because most of Suyama's sales are in the country UK but if I change this to USA and I hit enter now we see 1863 is what the number is here so let's see if I find another Suyama there it is I'll change this to USA and I'll hit enter now it's changing okay so I'll just hit undo a few times so that's the average if s so you can see that how the logic works with the count count if count if s and all of that now before we end this video the last video for today in this example we'll talk about v look up and this is a very common exam question so the idea of v look up is that in this scenario a survey was done with some people and they were trying to find out what political parties were these people belonging to. Now, instead of typing the whole political party names, they came up with a coding system. So here's the party codes. One is green. So if the person was of the green party, they'll put one. Now, our job is to actually put the name of the party in there. So what we need to do is we need to look up these two columns in the vertical way which is vertical means to go down because there is another function called hlookup which will go horizontally so if my information was going in this direction I'll be using hlookup so I need to find the match of A in this party code so let's just scroll down so it will go down look for A and then it will look in the second column up here where it says democratic and it will take that word and it will pull it in here by the using the VLOOKUP function. So to start the VLOOKUP, I'm going to go to LOOKUP in the formulas and I'm going to start the VLOOKUP. Now it's asking me a few questions. So I'm just going to move this guy here. So the first thing is asking me what is my lookup value. My lookup value is whatever is in the cell C2. Whatever this A is my lookup value. So I'll click in there, not the actual word A here. Table array and always look in the below here to get some information about these sections. Table array is wherever your information is. Which where do I need to look up A? I need you to look up A in G and A. So you can just highlight the whole column. So you don't have to highlight these cells. If you do that, you'll have to hit F4 to make it absolute. Now I go to the third line. So the column index, I have two columns, column G and column H. Column G is column 1 and column H is column 2. So it's asking me when it finds the match, should I put what's in column 1? Or should I put what's in column 2? And I'm like, no, you need to put column number 2. Because I don't want the number 1. Because we'll be typing the same thing, A, in there. Now the last line, range lookup. The easiest way to understand is, is look at the bottom line here. It says, find an exact match which is equal to false. So if I type the word false in there, that means I'm looking for an exact match of A not a close enough match which is what through is if it's going to try to find a close match so I click OK so it puts the word democratic there I'll click in there look for fill handle pull it down and my job is done so one is green one is green so it found all the information so this is called V lookup so thank you for watching uh, in the upcoming videos we'll do a little bit with database functionality and also the subtotal functions. I'll go to the next line and I'll put sales multiply by 10% because in this line I need to tell Excel the value if true that is what should happen if the test is true that this person sells more than 5000 what should they get so I'm saying give them 10% of the sales I'll click in value if false click on the cell for the sales we always do calculation with cell reference, not the actual number. Multiply by 1% and I click OK. Now if I use the fill handle, you'll see that more than, less than 5000, they get 1%. In this video, I'll try to talk about some more functions and mainly if function. There was a function called sum if.
we'll look at count function, count if, average if, and there is no variations of sum if s, and most probably the v lookup function. So let's start with the if function. Now the if function is a logical function. So under formulas, within the logical category, you see the if function and you'll find there are lots of other functions like date and time and lookup so you can always click on any of them and then send bonus and more than 5000 get 10% bonus so there's 10% now anytime you change any of your criteria you'll have to click on C to start the FX because in that cell you have the if function so it will open that or you make the changes in the formula bar either way I prefer to score here and say if I change the value to say 7000 I have to click OK and now I have to use the fill handle again so I apply the formula down so now only one person gets 10 percent bonus now if you wanted to do it a little differently which might be a much a point to the function and it will tell you what it will do so that's a really good way to learn about functions and have a certain understanding about it like you see there is a function called dollar which is converts a number to text using currency format so all of these things can help in getting better understanding of different functions so here I want to do a if function if function is a logical function and the best way to understand it is like you know you talk to a child and you say if you will do this you will get something otherwise you'll get something else so there are three parts to the if function and what I want to do in this example is I want to figure out which employee will get a bonus and who will not get the bonus so I want to say that if they sell more than 5,000 give them a bonus maybe 10% bonus otherwise they will get only 1% bonus so I'll start the logical if I'm just gonna move this guy a little down now I'm gonna click on sales and I'm gonna put the greater than symbol so you can use like greater than less than equal to if you needed it and I'll put 5,000 and then I'll